love India. I love everything about it. I love the smells. I love the extremes. You can fall in love with India for a million reasons. I have fallen in love with the Asian elephant. A lot of the reason why you fall in love has to do with where you are and the mood you're in. I've never been anywhere I felt so totally overwhelmed. And the first time I saw Asian elephants, I was in a great mood on vacation. <laughs> oh, no wonder they seduced me. And because they're so deeply connected to the soul of India, once you love the elephant, you have to love India too. isn't the serene, timeless place you read about. It feels totally out of control. When I'm here, I just try to, oh, let things happen and trust in destiny. Stop, stop, stop. Stop! But it's that sense of things spinning out of control that's brought me back. When someone you love is in trouble, you want to be there, and the Asian elephant is in trouble. Compared to the African elephant, it seems to have been forgotten. The last time I came, I didn't know there was a threat. I do now. I've learned the Asian elephant is in terrible danger. And I know that if I care, I have to do something now. I've got a long way to go from Delhi to Jaipur, then south, to try to find the wild elephants I saw last time. Threat. I mean, it's not just that I love the Asian elephants. Everyone in India loves loves the elephant. I mean, it's so revered. It's revered in Hinduism and Buddhism. And, I mean, why is it so endangered? I saw my first wild Asian elephant seven years ago in southern India. I don't know exactly what it was. But when I saw them, they captured my heart. Maybe it was just because they made me feel so happy inside. And I knew so little about them then. This is India's largest protected elephant reserve. But even in this sanctuary, they're not always safe. Just a few days ago, I heard that one of the majestic bulls I saw on my last visit had been killed by poachers, murdered because someone wanted his tusks that badly. The tragedy is that almost everyone loses out. Oh, the smell in here. Ivory traders get caught all the time. The tusks are confiscated and then burnt. This place feels like a graveyard. Oh, what a waste. Of all the wild elephants I saw the last time, there's one that I've never forgotten. A mother with a baby. It was as if we had, like, a bond. I saw her over several days, and someone said, well, she must be my elephant. She was special, because she was so vulnerable. There she is, there she is, there's my elephant, look. Look at her little face, oh my god. This is the reason why I fell in love with the Asian elephant, right here. She was blind in one eye. Had a kind of a white patch around her eye. And there's her baby. And her baby stayed with her all the time because she served as the eyes of her mother, you know. It was such a romantic, beautiful, loving story. If it hadn't been for her, I might never have come back. I'd love to see my elephant again. But there are so many ways an elephant can die in the wild, especially a blind one. Not so long ago, she could have been killed for sport, ending up in a taxidermist's chamber of horrors. <laughs> Two-thirds of India's elephants have been killed in the last hundred years. 
But it's not hunters or poachers who threaten the 18,000 or so left. The problem's bigger, much more complex, much harder to control. In India today, it's the population explosion that's destroying the Asian elephant. It's said there's a baby born here every second. This is Jaipur, the fabled pink city. It's doubled in size since I was here last. Oh, it's a wild place, colorful, it's so alive, where you can see, smell, and touch India's chaotic charm. <laughs> the place just oh, swallows you up. It's heaven for shopaholics like me. That's heavy, dude. Yeah, light come, mat karo, light come ho jayegi. You want to have some extra light? I have some strong. Ooh, that's sexy. Okay, bye bye. bye, -bye. Oh, whoops! A motorcycle? Oh. Unhappily, however, the cracks are beginning to show in the special relationship between people and elephants. It's traditionally been very close. The first records of working elephants date back four and a half thousand years, and the elephant has long been revered as the living image of a powerful god. It's a respect that in the past has kept the elephant safe, but it's being undermined. Here at the Amber Palace, these dignified animals are being used as tourist attractions. It hurts me to see them trudging through the heat of the day without enough water. This isn't how it's supposed to be. What's happening to the Hindu reverence for life and to their ancient worship of the elephant god, Ganesh? Long before organized religion, Asians worshipped a primitive elephant god. Then in the 5th century, the Hindus created Ganesh. He's still the most potent force in the spiritual life of India. I would like to uh, buy some offerings. Ganesh is the remover of obstacles, the protector of travelers. He's a favorite with taxi drivers. He can bestow a blessing on any new relationship or journey. I have my own Ganesh in my kitchen at home. He watches over the whole family. Aapka Shublam, name? Goldie. Goldie. Safar pe jaare? Goldie ani kusavar to ayuta malum. Hopefully, Ganesh will help me find my own special elephant. This is protection thread. Understand? Find the back. Now I've been blessed by Ganesh, the remover of obstacles. I'm off into the wilds of southern India, protected. See, Inesh is with me. I'm going to meet someone who knows a lot about the problems facing the Asian elephant. Mark Shand, he's crazy about them. He even has his own elephant called Tara, whom he adores. Mark's great friend, Aditi Patankar, is waiting to meet me, I hope. He's going to be my guide for the rest of this trip. I've read a lot about him in Mark's book. Mark says Aditi is proud of India, its culture and its traditions. That's why they teamed up to work together for the elephants. Hmm, it's very quiet. 
And I've got so many questions I want to ask. There's an elephant. <laughs> what possessed the first person to tame an elephant? To start the relationship? What possesses any of us to start relationships? In India, they're arranged. Oh, now that's a fascinating tradition. There is something in India. Arranged marriages, which fascinates yes, me. Yes, yes. Let me put it this way. Don't you think all marriages are arranged? Oh. I think it's just the people that are different who arrange them. I know, but I mean... I think they're all arranged. You mean they're pre-arranged? They're all arranged. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Does That's that answer a, your question? It is. It's a very mystical answer. Yeah. And I'll take that because I'm in India. People say to me, why do you love India so much? I mean, what is it about India? Yeah. India is magic. It's a magical place where anything is possible. It's a magical mystery tour. <laughs> Are we lost? Oh, well, trust in destiny. I think that's what Aditya just said. And tomorrow when I meet Mark's elephant, Oh, I'm going to have to trust in something. I love elephants, but they're so strong, and they really scare me. Mm, good morning, girl. Good morning, girl. That makes you look very smart today. You're not the only star around here, huh? You're going to have to and you're going to have to behave yourself. You're going to behave yourself? I wonder what's in store for me today. Hmm. When Mark Shand isn't working to save elephants all over Asia, he spends as much time as he can with Tara. Her name means star in Hindi, and that's exactly what she is to him. He never meant to keep her. He only bought her to make one journey across India. But elephants make you do things you never thought you'd do. Hi, Mark. Come. Hi. This is so beautiful. What a setting. Welcome to India. Welcome to Tara. If we can get her out of the water. I met Mark at a dinner for the Asian elephant appeal. He <laughs> had more clothes on then. How are you? Great. Nice to see you. Sorry, I'm very wet. Mm. Okay, everything all right? Good. Yeah? So what do you think? Oh, she's beautiful. Did you? Just like the pictures. Yeah. What did I think she was going to look like? Yeah. <laughs> I must be nervous. Singal is the mahout. Singal is Tara's constant yeah. companion, her yeah. mahout. Mel, Mel, what? Mel. Oh, here comes Tara. That's her greeting. She's just checking you out. She's just making friends. You see, they do everything by sense of smell. You got very poor eyesight. Yeah. Uh -huh. I hope she likes me. She does. Don't worry, don't worry. Uh-oh. I don't think she uh, likes that perfume from Jaipur. Is that what you expected? Yes, she's just as beautiful as I thought. But, she's uh, so sweet. Very good one. She's big. Then I'm going to get you to... Come and give her a little bath. All right? Wash Tara? He must be joking. Mark. Yeah? It's all right, I promise you. She'll be on her side. She'll be perfectly peaceful. And that's how you get to know elephants. It's just like the children, isn't it? You don't know your child, do you? Wash them. Tara seems much more relaxed than me. There she is. There you are. Gentle as a kitten. It's incredible. I never thought that I'd be touching an elephant this close and caressing. Well, 
I feel a bit better now. I'm going in. Yikes. Well, I, I have to say that, you know, when we see elephants, or I see them in the romantic yeah. aspect of the elephant, is that you always want to go up and touch an elephant and kiss their trunk. But I never thought I'd get this close to one. <laughs> Can I honestly say without fear? <laughs> I don't. Yogi, I do assure you. This elephant, Tara, I bought. Must be eight, ten years ago. And she's a beautiful elephant. I'm not too sure about her age. Yeah. You see, you can tell the age from the fold of the ear here. But as you know, it's impolite to ask ladies their age. So I think she's been lying to me for a long time. Uh -huh. I think she's probably about 38 or 40. Mm -hmm. And the older they get, the ear, the ear curls over. Is she just quite happy lying yeah, there? Yeah, like this, this, this to her is the greatest pleasure in the world. Oh. The greatest pleasure in the world. I mean, can you imagine, just lying there, right. and she has this huge family looking after her all the time. Life hasn't always been kind to Tara. Mark bought her on a whim. He says from the moment he saw her, he knew she was the elephant for him. But before he chose her to make a four-month journey with Aditya to highlight the plight of the elephant, she'd been badly abused. He loved her, took care of her, and brought her back to life. He says he'd always intended selling her at the end of the journey, but when it came to it, he just couldn't bear it. So this is what we wash elephants with. It actually it, it varies from country to country. In, in, in Sri Lanka, for instance, they use coconut husks. And these are like, they're just like pumice stones. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you do, yeah. you don't wash this part here. This is her spine. Okay. So you don't touch the spine at all. You just wash this great fat side. Hard. Okay. As gently or as hard as you like. I always thought an elephant's skin would be so rough, but it isn't. Her little hairs tickle my hands. I feel I want to hug her, but I'm not brave enough yet. And here, this is, the, uh, this is a great thing to do. If you take, take yeah. and scrub that as hard as you like, that's what she loves. God, it, it's odd because it's so hard. I mm. won't hurt her. You know? No, you won't hurt her, I promise oh, you. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I won't. You but... can go as hard as you like, the harder the better. You're so abusive. <laughs> that's what I found when I first did oh. Tara. I felt like I just went in and did this. Yeah, like this, you know, I was worried I was going to hurt her. Now, didn't she say that she was jealous of women? Huh? In your book? I must have been lying. I remember. I was. <laughs> you know? so I tried to look as butch as possible. <laughs> you certainly don't look butch, girl, if I may say so. Okay. No, 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 they're not jealous of women at all. Actually, the walk of an elephant in Sanskrit, from the old Sanskrit, yeah. is that Indian women were supposed to emulate the walk of an elephant because oh. it was so sexy. Oh. Ah, you see there, she agrees with it. Yeah. If you walk from behind, the backside goes up yeah. and down, up and down. Oh, it's wonderful. Right. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. You can get it on okay. a bit of dry land by sitting on here. Yeah. Oh, they are dry land. Eddie. Now you can. So if she just suddenly starts to get up, mm -hmm. then what do I do? Well, I don't really have much time. Oh, well, get me off of her. She oh, will no, go it's off. such a mean thing to say. I didn't mean to say it just no. like that, Tara. She'll be listening to that. I know she will. I have no, no, understand. No, no, she won't move. She might move her, her, her ass around a bit, but she won't move upwards like that. Uh-huh. There you are. Now. You're done? Come. There we go. Look at your shorts wet. This is service for the smile. Yes. There you are. Thank you, dear. That's quite all right. Oh, God. Tomorrow, she'll be carrying you. Oh, wow. You're going to roll. You're going to get up. Ooh. 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 Tara lying down, I could handle, but Tara standing up. Yikes. But I do feel there's a bit of trust between us now. I'm sure that's why Mark got me in that water. Here's what I want to know. Oh. Elephants have an emotional life. Yeah, very much so. Well, I'm sure Tara sort of 
cried when I left. I mean, there was a large, large tear that dripped down her cheek. There wasn't, was there really? There was. I'm sure she did. I like to think she did anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she wasn't. Maybe she was relieved to get rid of me. I don't know. But, um, for instance, down in the south, children are left with elephants. When the mothers go off to do the shopping and things like that, they leave the elephants there and the children sit between the front feet and they oh. look after them. Oh. And there was another case the other day, about a year ago, in uh, northwest Bengal. A calf was knocked down by a train. And the very next day, the mother waited for the train to pass. And as the train was passing, knocked the train over. Yes, sir. Oh, mm, derailed the whole train. Oh, my God. You know, the African elephant seems to be in a different situation at the moment. The reason I came and I wanted to do this is mm. because the Asian elephant mm. uh, doesn't get the kind of publicity that that... And, and there's so many things that need to be done in order to save this creature. The problem is that, you know, India grows by 20 million people a year. 20 million people yeah, a year. Yeah, which is a lot. Um, and it's loss of habitat, forests being cut down, and it's just endless. And elephants are long-ranging animals, and they need long spaces to walk through yeah. and they eat different foods in different places. They're migratory animals. And it's very difficult to change their ways. So what you're getting now is, 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 is a conflict between humans and elephants. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you've got to be pragmatic about it. I mean, you can't actually get too emotional about it because, you know, a lot of elephants aren't going to survive. Mm -hmm. so if you can't control, you know, population control, it's, it's you know, it's, you're facing, the elephant is facing a grim future. So if I gave you a dollar, where would you put it? I'd probably go and buy myself a packet of cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Very naughty. <laughs> Sorry. There were once millions of Asian elephants roaming from Syria to China. Now they're reduced to tiny herds in fragments of forest. When they try to reclaim their territory, they sometimes attack innocent villagers who have no choice over where they live. People need the land, too. This is a bamboo coracle, a round boat. Later, it'll be covered with buffalo skin. This is like what you do when you basket weave, right? Same I paddled one of these on my last trip. what crazy people do in America. <laughs> if there is an answer, it's got to be somehow to save the forests for elephants and the people. You know, I've collected elephants all my life. I have them all over my house. I've always loved them. And to tell you the truth, it's like anything. I mean, I could say I have a healthy respect for them, but actually, I'm afraid. And Why to, are you afraid? Because they're big and they're strong. And, and I'd heard so many stories about what they've done. I mean, how they go into the villages, how they can just, you know, kill. There are stories, for instance, when we were up in, in the northwest Bengal, mm -hmm. there was a situation up there where a tusker had come into on one of its migratory routes and started to push the house. Mm -hmm. and there was, a, there was a, a family inside, a young um, wife and uh, the husband and, oh. and the baby. And the, the wife ran, ran out with the baby in her arms that the elephant put the baby aside and then grabbed the woman and then took her off into this field oh my God. and then and then killed her but you don't oh. it, the amazing thing is about it is is they don't just kill them they really vent their anger on them they mm -hmm. you know their land has been taken away and you can see it mm -hmm. indelibly marked on the person because there's nothing left of the person this no. seems to be a totally no. new no depiction yeah, a new of this it's animal. a new phenomena completely the Man elephant is, is a peaceful in. herbivore doesn't want to harm you no. its only enemy is man doesn't want to harm you like any wild animal but it's a formidable animal it's a large animal it's an yeah. intelligent animal and we've got to you know do something to save them and you can't save them all. I mean, there's no way that you can begin to save all the elephants. But you can ensure that maybe, you know, five or six genetic viable populations remain for all of us and for our grandchildren and people to see for the future, you know. There's no escaping the conflict. Just in India, elephants are killing 400 people a year. The farmers don't want to harm the elephants. They are still gods on earth, after all they've got to save their crops to feed their families. Oh. 
Yesterday, Mark got me to wash Tara. Today, he thinks he's gonna teach me to ride her. <laughs> In your dreams. What we should have is a ladder. Now, I wonder where the ladder is. Then we can put you up properly like a sort of Maharaja. And then, well, you, can, then you can go up on the ladder. Would you like yeah. to do that? Well, I can go up on the trunk. On the trunk or the tail? I mean, the tail. OK. I don't know my ass from my tail. Yeah, I mean, my but... trunk. You know, it can get confusing, it the is, tail yeah. and the trunk. <laughs> I said. Oh. Oh. You're just on an elephant. Oh. There you are. Straight on up. There. How's that? It's, uh, it's good. Right. It's good. It's kind of amazing. All right. Yeah. Are you so comfortable? Put... Right up there. Right, right, right. No, she's going to come up, OK? So hang on. Right. There. How's that? Good. Yeah. That good, all right? Yeah. That? That? You see, it's probably nicer to be up and down, isn't it? Well, it, it is. Got I'm saying yes to everything. Because that's the kind of girl I am. Obliging. But wait a minute. What happens if Tara says no? She doesn't really need to listen to us. She's much more powerful than that. Hmm. What's in it for her? Apart from her daily bath, of course. Mm, that was fun. Elephants are quite lazy. And you just got to keep moving your toes into these little ears here, just to keep them moving. Okay? Mm -hmm. You can actually stop an elephant by drawing your feet back. Like that. Pulling back, pulling back behind their pulling, ears. Pulling back. Now, pulling back with your... Uh, with the heels? Action, with your heels, like mm -hmm. that. Okay, so we go ahead. Mal! Mal! That's forward. Okay? And you keep working your toes in there. And then one of the most important commands, obviously, is stop. Dirt! Dirt! Now, that's the command I always forgot. Oh. <laughs> and that's a very important command to know. <clears throat> okay? Chi. 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 Chi is turn. Chi. Okay. 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 All right. <clears throat> so. Yeah? What we're going to do is now you're going to get into the driver's seat. All right? What? So. No, wait a minute. Do you want me to sit where you are? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't no, know. It'll no, be all right. Don't worry. Okay. And what we first have to do is take your socks off. Okay? Uh... About your socks. Oh, God. I'm a little nervous. No, you'll be all right. Don't worry. I promise you. Okay, get it over the hump. Oh, come on, Mark. God, it's difficult to get a pair of socks off, Blind. <laughs> Move forward. Okay. Move forward. Sit in the middle. Push your toes there and say, Mal. 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 Lighter, lighter. Mal. Mal. There. Keep going. Keep pushing. Mal. Keep pushing your toes. Mal. Keep pushing your toes in. Mal. Mal. There you are. You're doing great. No? Okay. Cheat, cheat, cheat. Mal. 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 Well, that's a great art. I think this is the first time I've stuck Keep my going. toes behind someone's Mal. ears. Keep going. Well, ears this big, anyway. We're going straight for tree, Goldie. Cheat, 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 cheat. Watch out. Mal, 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 mal. There we are. You've avoided the tree beautifully. Mal, mal. You've got 20 miles to do, Mal. <laughs> That's it. Shut up. That's it. Shut up. Mal. I'll probably be ready for my test in, oh, 10 years? Well, have you ever driven a four-ton truck? Shut up! Mal! Chi, 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 All right, now get it to stop. What's the word? Dot. 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 This is the trickiest bit. Bite! Bite. Means down. Bite! Get down on your knees. Bite! And elephants don't like to get down. It's not a natural position for them. No wonder I'm having trouble. Bite! Well, tea break. 
<laughs> there you go, keep trying. Oh, now, now, God, you... this is a true test of my power. No, this is, this is real power. My okay. dogs don't mind me. Why would this elephant mind me? No, she doesn't. She Fight! loves you. She, does, she, does, she hates sitting Fight! down. This is one Fight! of the things. It's a Fight! great test for a mahout. Get an elephant down. Fight! I hate going down. Bye, Tara! Mahouts also say an elephant won't go down Bye. until it knows all the world is at peace. And the elephant Whoa. is the sole judge of when that is. Whoa, what an effort! There we are. Bravo. Well done. Oh, thank you. What a treat. Shabash. Well. Shabash. Well. Ah, oh, what a great day, and what a fabulous elephant. So what if I almost hit a tree? <laughs> I rode her, didn't I? I now know what this extraordinary relationship between people and elephants feels like. I think I also understand why elephants live and work with people. It's a mutual love and respect. Part of me wants to stay here, but I know I've got to try and find my own special elephant again in the wild. At last, I'm in the wilds of southern India, on the trail of the blind female elephant I saw seven years ago. I'm going to be heading up the Kabini River with the Ditya into some of the best elephant wilderness in Asia. It's an area of 600 square miles created by three adjoining national parks in three Indian states. It's the height of the dry season, and yet there's still plenty of water here because the river's been dammed. Oh, it's a magical place, made even more surreal by the dead trees that were swamped when the river was flooded. Everything comes to the water at this time of year, although the Comorants look as if they've made themselves at home. Aditya tells me this is a fishing eagle. He doesn't need to tell me what this is. It's a handbag with a vicious set of teeth. I'll be taking a dip in here. Aditya says we'll leave these guys behind soon. But how can you be sure? Wow, our first Ellie. Look at this guy. Aditya reckons he's about 30. Ellie's can live to 80 in the wild. Males mature at about 10, and that's when they leave the herd to spend most of their time on their own. There's a herd up ahead. It's big. Several mothers and their children must be gathered together in this one. The oldest female takes charge of the group. Just like all families. I really want to get closer, but we're not in a very good position. We're upwind of them. They'll hear the boat pretty soon. We'll just have to move on to try to find another herd that's not as close to the river. Ah, this is better. They're further away. We've got a chance here. 
They look as if they're eating mud, and Aditya says that that's exactly what they're doing. They're taking in vital minerals as well as cooling off. Not a bad idea. They can suck up ten gallons at a time. Mmm. I wouldn't mind playing in that mud. I want to get a better look, so we're going to sneak along the bank. We've got to keep quiet and downwind of them so they don't smell or hear us. These are the footprints of Elise. Look at this. <laughs> what size did you say, madam? There's nothing quite like being so close to 30 million years of evolution. Several hundred tons of prehistoric beasts. Whew. They seem to have mammoth appetites. How much food do they stay? Around 200 kilos. Is that a lot? Yeah, they need at least 200 kilos. And a lot of it is wasted, you know. I mean, their digestion system is not great. So elephant, that's why elephants can cause a lot of ecological damage by feeding, by the feeding. I see. That's why elephants without enough room destroy the place. But it might help if they didn't keep throwing their food around. And this is just perfect terrain, you see. There's bamboo, yeah. which they feed on all day. Yeah. River. Right. They bathe. This next door. Bathe, go back, feed, bathe, go back, feed. They've got everything they need in this reserve. It's a great life for them when they can get it. They throw stuff on their backs to try to stop insects biting them and to stop them from getting sunburn. It's a lot cheaper than my sun cream, that's for sure. Too bad, but hopefully they'll be more further on. It's much shallower here, and no sign of crocs. But you never can tell. The odd looks pretty relaxed, though. We're moving on to an area called Mastagudi because Aditi has been told there is a blind female in one of the herds which sometimes feeds there. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope. We're almost in the middle of the three national parks right here. By working together, they've created a very special area for elephants and many other rare species. A spotted deer has escaped from some wild dogs. Another one's not been so lucky. Wild dogs are extremely rare, but they do just fine here because the forests have been protected for the elephants. If the will to save the elephants disappears, then everything, everything else could go with it.
Elephants can really move if they want to. Apparently, they don't like dogs of any sort. They get under their feet and it unnerves them. I wonder if he knows that he is the protector of all the animals in the forest. The water's too shallow for the motorboat now, so it's into the coracle. It's slower but less noisy. Although I think between Aditi and I, we make more noise than the engine. It's the way the coracle keeps going around and around that tickles us. It's a metaphor for life. Life is a coracle, really. Life is just a coracle ride. It's odd who destiny throws you together with. I never thought I'd meet anyone who laughs as much as me. Before the river was flooded, this was the site of a Ganesh temple. The sacred stone is still here. It can only be seen in the dry season. Oh, this is a good omen, I think. I think I'm going to find my elephant. <laughs> I think so, right? I think you will. Tusks on these bulls are magnificent. Each one weighs about 100 pounds. Only male Asian elephants have tusks. Unlike the African elephant, where both sexes have them. No. Oh. Hello. <laughs> the trunks are pretty similar in both elephants. They're a huge extension of the nose and top lip. They make good siphons and great loudspeakers. This is such a great day. I've really good feeling that this could be my elephant's herd. I know we're in roughly the right area. She could be so close. This is the most fun I've had. Aditya says he's sure this is my blind elephant's herd. Oh my god. Now I'm really excited. I'm scared. I can't see her in the main herd. Oh, please, Ganesh, don't let me down now. I think that's her. I think it's my elephant on the left. Yes, it is. There's the blind white eye. It's my elephant. I can't believe it. She's still alive. And look, she's got another tiny baby. I wonder if the other elephant is the baby I saw last time. Boy, she's grown up. They're both caring for the new baby. Oh, it's so wonderful how they look after each other. I can't believe I came all this way. I never thought I'd see her. And now she has a baby, another one. And she's safe. I don't know why elephants make me cry. <laughs> she's so tiny. Hardly see her. Just a few days old. She was born while I was here? Oh my yeah, God. you may be right. Not more than a week, ten days. You know, I think that elephant is the grown up baby I saw seven years ago. She's being so loving to the little one, it must be her. Now I have to believe in destiny. What else could have brought me here today to see my elephant? Her seven-year-old and her tiny new baby. It's bath time after bathing Tara.
I know how much fun this is. Trunks make good snorkels. Baby elephants are naturally great swimmers. It's just as well. It's wonderful how the herd huddles together to keep the little ones safe. The adults also swish their trunks from side to side to scare away the crops. When you're this size, even though you're an elephant, you could fall prey to a croc or a tiger. But even I'd feel safe in there. Look how they make a circle around her. I think that somewhere in there, there's a lesson about family, don't you? Somewhere in there, in that circle, yeah. there's a lesson about I know when I was between my mommy's legs, I felt very safe. <laughs> but I didn't have a nose that big. <laughs> Nor did my nose have a hundred thousand muscles in it. And when you're an elephant this young, all those muscles aren't developed yet. In a few months, he'll learn his trunk is his most important asset. Right now, he doesn't seem to know what it is. It'll be a while yet before this tiny baby will be able to join in the fun with the other young ones in the family. They seem to have such a carefree childhood here. The games they play get more serious as they grow older. But before they know it, they're talking about a couple of tons of fun. <laughs> they must quickly learn to pick on someone their own size to play with. An elephant's trunk is so versatile, it can just as easily uproot a tree as pick up a peanut. It's one of the most highly developed organs of any animal. It's a happy day. It's a really happy day. <laughs> that made this happen. He removed all the obstacles, remember? Yeah, you was saying, you were saying. I think you made a vicious way. I can't believe we're this close. It's amazing to come back here after seven years to find life going on as before. It would be great to think it'll be the same in another seven years. And maybe it will, if Ganesh has anything to do with it. So long as the elephant remains sacred, there's hope. I think Aditya knows why this place is so important to me and why I had to find my elephant again. I'm so glad I came back. When I first came to Kabini seven years ago, I fell in love with this elephant. And I wasn't sure why I fell in love with this elephant. She was blind, she had a baby. And I went home. And I couldn't stop thinking about her. Maybe it's because it was uh, a kind of romantic story about a, a little child who was the eyes of the, of the mother. And now that I've come back, I've learned so much more about about the life of the elephant. I, I know now why I love elephants. 
They're a very special, intelligent animal. With a great soul, I think. And they take care of their families, which is so important, important to me. Watching them, watching them interrelate, and how they take care of their children, and how the ants take care of the other children. I watch when the babies go away and the mother takes the trunk and says, come on, let's go. I do that with my kids. And when an animal is dying, I guess some of us think that an animal just dies. But in the world of the elephant and the family, they hold up their sick until they can't anymore. I did that with my mother. I held her up until she couldn't stand anymore. It's a lesson. And now, there's a baby. To save this baby, I know now we have to be realistic. We can't save all the Asian elephants. There's not enough room. But we can reduce the problems. People like Mark are working on a detailed international plan to save the key herds in Asia, like this one. So long as they get the support they need to protect those elephants' homes, the Asian elephant will survive. I've come much further than I ever dreamed I would on this trip. What I think started for me is an idealistic romance has turned into a genuine passion, and I owe this journey to a very generous teacher. I can't go home without saying thank you. Tara, she's gorgeous. Isn't she? Yeah. She's been decorated oh. up for you, especially for your arrival. Well, oh, sweetie. Remember how scared I was in the beginning? I know. Look how not scared I am now. Not at all scared now. <laughs> mm. Tara is very special. In her own subtle way, she first inspired Mark, and now me, to fight for the Asian elephant. I hope Tara can go on teaching us all how important it is to save the elephant. Because without them, not only will the forest and its animals die, but something of India's soul will be lost, too. Good girl. God, I never gave anybody a drink that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Morning, everybody. 